We've just returned from the one week of a month-long trip called Operation Toxic Gulf. It's a cooperative effort between Sea Shepherd and Ocean Alliance. And the thing that just knocked me out was that we were out of sight of land for a week, but we were never out of sight of oil rigs. They were always all over the place around us. Back on Earth Day of 2010, BP's deep water horizon drilling rig was in very deep water, digging a very deep well. Mud started coming back. It was mixed eventually with gas and finally a violent explosion which killed 11 people. It continued burning for 36 hours and then sank. And when it sank, that action broke off its connection to the bottom. And then there was a massive gushing leak of oil which went on for 86 days making it the worst ecological disaster in the history of the United States. What we're doing is getting samples from sperm whales. These we analyze for their chemical constituents, also the constituents of the dispersants that are used to hide the oil. What this tells us, this kind of information, is what's happening to life in the Gulf as a result of the BP blowout, which occurred on Earth Day of 2010. We're studying sperm whales because they, like people, live at the tops of oceanic food chains. And oceanic food chains are mechanisms that concentrate substances that are found in the food of animals that the animals can't handle. They have to get store it. They can't get rid of it. They have no mechanism to get rid of it. So what we learn about sperm whales is undoubtedly true also for humans. What we may find, we don't know until we find it, but what we may find is substances that affect particularly hormone systems. They're called endocrine disrupting compounds. Why is that important? Because the most important functions of life are controlled by a series of hormones and some substances which are synthetic molecules created by people are affecting hormone concentrations and actual abilities of hormones to work with cells in such a way that it's just devastating to organisms. And what's needed is to have scientists somehow combine with groups who know how to get the attention of the world and make sure that their results get before the world. And unless that kind of thing happens, then it's an incredibly slow process to let the world know what problems it's facing. At the moment, the anti-intellectual movement in the United States, which is shocking to me, is uh, making sure that people don't know what's going on. And so I think it's become absolutely essential for scientists to work with organizations that can get the word out about their efforts. And I've known Sea Shepherd for years. They do extraordinary work. They're very controversial. But people at Sea Shepherd have mastered the art of getting the world's attention and doing it in a serious fashion. And my feeling is that's something that can highly benefit scientists. What I love about our collaboration with Sea Shepherd is they will have produced hugely important science about a problem which is one of the, well, is the worst ecological disaster in the history of the United States. But you can't stop pollution without a complete change of how you go about things. And that change is incredibly important. It's important to get whaling under control, incredibly important. But it's also important to get going with the next huge problem for whales, which is pollution.